basic jeweler's saw frame. A simple, straightforward design, but for many beginning jewelry students, it is a mystery. How do I hold the frame when I put in the blades? How do I get the saw blades to stay in that frame? How much tension do I apply? Why do the blades keep on breaking? Do I sit low or high when sawing? Let's take a closer look at this amazing tool and answer those questions. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. Let's take the mystery out of the jeweler saw and help you become comfortable when sawing and piercing. Sawing is one of the basic skills of jewelry making that you will always use. It is not a difficult skill once you understand the basics. Let's take a look at the saw frame itself. Here's the handle, the lower jaw with thumb screw, the upper jaw with thumb screw, and an extra thumb screw and a jaw part. I put those out so you can see what they look like. The blades are suspended between the upper jaw and the lower jaw. The back jaw is an adjustable jaw and can adjust the frame to accommodate the length of the saw blade and also to adjust the tension of the saw blade. To cut out a shape or pierce a design, you must start with a drawing. How do we transfer the drawing onto the metal? Simply draw onto the metal with a marker or a scribe. Or you can cover the metal with masking tape and draw on the tape. This is really convenient when you've done a lot of polishing on the metal first before you cut out your piece. This will protect the surface. Or you can glue a drawing onto the metal with rubber cement. That works very successfully. Let's insert the saw blade into the saw frame. We want to stretch the blade between the upper and the lower jaws. We'll insert the blade in the slot between the saw frame and the adjustable pieces and the thumb screws. We'll put the blade in the upper jaw first. We'll check the blade to make sure that the teeth are pointing down and out and down is toward the handle and out is away from the frame. Insert the blade all the way into the upper jaw, tighten it up tight and making sure that that blade is pointing straight toward the lower jaw. We want to make sure that the blade is just above the lower jaw. In this case, it's a little bit too short. So we'll adjust the frame by unloosening the back jaw and we can slide the frame and adjust the height of it. So we'll just take it so it's just above the lower jaw and then tighten that thumb screw on that back jaw. The frame itself is flexible, so now we can adjust to make sure that that saw blade goes about halfway down into the jaw. You can see that it does flex quite a bit, so simply lean it up against the bench, lean it against your stomach, and insert that blade into that slot by pushing on the frame, which will flex it, make it go down about halfway into the lower frame and then you'll have a nice tight blade ready to saw. The seating position in sawing is extremely important. You want to adjust your stool to its lowest height. Sit with your sawing shoulder directly in front of the bench pin and face the bench. Don't sit at a diagonal. Face the bench straight. This will help you keep the saw facing forward and straight. The saw must be in a vertical, straight up and down position, pointing at the bench at all times. This will keep the saw blade from binding and twisting when cutting into the metal. You will be cutting through the least amount of metal in this position. Before you start sawing, it's a good idea to lubricate the blade. Beeswax or candle wax works great. Just one pass through the wax is all you need. You'll be applying the wax during the sawing process also. You'll feel when you need to add more. It will start to drag. Again, the seating position is important. 
Your sawing shoulder should be in front of the bench pin facing the bench. Start the sawing by moving the saw up and down. You can start at the bottom and work your way up. This will give a nice little slot for you to start and then a nice even up and down stroke with the saw facing toward the bench and holding the metal down with your other hand. As you can see the saw frame is held straight up and down and straight toward the bench. Push forward slightly and the blade will dig into the metal and start cutting. You don't need to force the saw to cut. A gentle touch will go a long way to successful sawing. Try not to turn the saw when you get to a curve. You want to let the metal do the turning and not the saw. So you can see that I'm turning the metal on the bench pin, making sure that I support it on both sides of the bench pin. That's why we have the V-shape cut into the bench pin. Keeping my saw going straight up and down and straight toward the bench. And I'm turning the metal slightly as I go around the curve. You don't want to force the blade because it'll start catching and then it'll hop on you. So don't force the blade, just nice gentle strokes and support the metal on both sides of the bench pin. If you start to feel the saw blade binding, Simply take your wax and give it another stroke on the blade. It will lubricate it and make your sawing much, much easier. Nice even strokes. Facing the, the bench, keeping the saw straight up and down. Turning the metal, not the saw. If your design has an inner pierced area, then we need to be drilling a hole in that inner pierced area. And we need to be very precise as to where that hole is to be drilled. To accommodate that, we're going to use a center punch. This is a basic center punch. It's a piece of steel with a point on the end of it and it's put in the area where we want to drill the hole. Simply put it in there and then tap it with our chasing hammer. Just tap it once and that will put a small dent into the metal and the drill bit will stay on that spot. This is an automatic center punch. This is a little bit different. You don't have to use a chasing hammer. It has a spring on the inside here and you simply put it in the area where you want to drill the hole, push down, and it automatically makes a dent. To drill our hole, we're going to use a flexible shaft. This has a drill bit on the end of it and you simply put it in the dent where the center punch mark was and drill straight down. That'll go through the metal very easily and then we'll be ready to insert our blade. Now that we have our hole drilled, we need to get the blade inside that piercing and through that hole. Very simple. Make sure that you have your blade attached to the upper jaw, nice and tight. Grab the blade, slip it through the hole, and then hold the blade, and then move the piece of metal all the way up to the upper jaw. This is really important because then it won't put any pressure on the blade and possibly break it. Then guide it into your lower jaw like you normally would. Flex the frame. Just push against the frame, it will flex, get your tension for your saw blade, and 
tighten that lower jaw and then we're ready to saw. Before you start sawing, it's a good idea to, again, lubricate your blade. One pass of the wax works perfect. Then hold the piece of metal in the V part of your bench pin and try to hold it on both sides. And make sure again that you keep the blade and the saw frame pointing toward the bench and move your metal around the curve. Slight forward motion. If you feel your blade starting to catch, put a little wax on it. Never hurts to wax it. And nice, even, long, smooth strokes. If you get into an area where you need to move the piece of metal, it's a little kind of binding, just lift it up a little bit and position it and then start sawing. And there we have our pierced area. I hope that you've enjoyed this video on sawing and piercing and that it has helped you with your sawing and piercing techniques and also helped take some of the mystery out of the jeweler's saw frame. Please subscribe below and feel free to leave any comments, questions, or suggestions for any future videos. I really appreciate that. Until next time, you take care. See you soon.